Hey you, I'm Emily, the Drone Angel, and welcome back to your one-stop shop for everything drone related. Today I'm gonna to talk about how to measure windy weather and show you how to properly fly your drone in windy conditions. But before we get started, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button so you're notified when new videos go up. I'm in a category five hurricane right now. Do you think it's too windy for me to fly? I get that question a lot. How windy is too windy to fly? Now, I'm no stranger to flying my drone in windy weather. Trust me, it gets windy out there on those boats. But at some point, you have to accept that it's just not safe to fly. You don't wanna be that person that loses their drone to mother nature, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna share his name, but I'm gonna share a story. I was visiting two friends in the Bay Area, and after a couple nights of just chasing the Milky Way with our cameras, we decided to fly our drones a little closer to the San Francisco area. Don't worry, drone police. We were still flying in legal airspace. Anyway, he flew his DJI Mavic Pro up to get the perfect shot, but he made one big mistake. He started flying in the same direction as the wind, closer to the city. I was doing the same thing and trying to line up my own photos, except I decided to fly my Phantom 4 Pro against the wind. About 10 minutes into his flight, he realized that his battery was dropping way faster than usual, and he struggled to keep control of his drone. Now it's safe to say that his drone was never seen again, at least not by us. Sadly, you can't send get well soon cards because we don't even know where it ended up. Get well soon. The winds were so strong that day that if I didn't have a Phantom 4 Pro, this big Phantom 4 Pro, and chosen to fly against the wind, I probably would have lost my drone as well. All that is to say, sometimes it's not worth the risk even if the lighting conditions are perfect. <gasps> Bro, it looks clear outside. If it's fine for me, it's fine for my drone, right? Not necessarily. A good rule of thumb is that wind speed can be up to two thirds of the drone speed, which you can find in the manual provided by DJI. Now I know it's very unlikely that most of you have this manual just sitting in your bag. So just, you know, take a moment and just simply Google the maximum speed of your drone instead. Let's say you're flying the Mavic 3 Cine here. Supposedly it can fly up to 47 miles per hour and two thirds of that is just over 30 miles per hour. The maximum wind speed before it's unsafe to fly. You don't have to use this exact number Number. It's only a reference point. And your risk tolerance and experience flying should always come into play. I personally don't like to fly in winds that are more than like 15 to 20 miles per hour with my Mavic 3 Cine, especially if I'm planning to fly my drone in risky conditions, like over a body of water in the same direction that the wind is moving. The danger with flying in the same direction as the wind, like with what happened with my friend, is that the wind can pick up your drone and make it extremely difficult to return to home. It can be swept out and gone forever before you even have a chance to react. If you're using wind speeds to determine whether it's safe to fly, then you need to feel confident that your intel is accurate and up to date. Wind conditions can change, and they're different depending on the altitude. For example, the wind speed could be 50 miles per hour on the ground, but then be completely different when you're 200 feet up in the air. That's why I use weather-focused apps to determine wind speed, even though you can Google it for the city that you're flying in. There are many apps out there, but today I'm gonna to focus on two that share information about the weather. The first being the UAV forecast app. The UAV forecast app gives wind profiles at different altitudes and a detailed forecast. It will literally tell you if it's good to fly or not based on weather predictions, taking out some of the guesswork so you can focus on, you know, the fun stuff. The Storm Raider app is another great choice even though it is not specific to drone pilots. It has high quality, up-to-date information about wind speed, as well as other weather conditions like rain, hail, and snow, which I'm sure can pose a problem if you don't live somewhere like sunny California. You can easily push the time to look a few hours ahead, which is great for pre-flight planning, and you can customize what you want to appear on your map so you can include what is most important for your flights. There's one last thing you need to consider, your drone model. Now I'm talking about DJI drones in this video because they're industry standard for aerial photography and videography, and that's what I have the most experience with. Personally, I've noticed that the Phantom series and bigger drones like the Mavic 3 Cine here tend to handle wind a little bit better than some of the smaller DJI drones. Now I'm so glad I was flying the Phantom 4 Pro in the example I gave earlier because the higher flight speed made a big difference. And I also believe the weight of the drone, how big it was, really helped. Other drones with lower flight speeds are extra disadvantaged in the wind. Bro, nobody flies the Phantom series anymore. That's old school. 
Okay there, Kyle, but the Mavic 3 Cine is also great at handling the wind for the same reasons. And you can't forget about the size of your drone. Bigger drones are generally capable of handling rougher winds than smaller ones. And that's the second reason why drones like the Mavic 3 and the Phantom 4 Pro typically perform better. Almost every DJI model has an upper hand over the DJI mini series when it comes to windy conditions, as tough as those little buggers can be. If I expect to be flying in extra windy weather, I would never rely on a DJI Mini when I have other drones in my arsenal. You can make generalizations based on these stats, but as we all know, it depends on the exact model and the situation. Your mileage may vary. I would suggest that newer pilots should just stay on the ground if you're unsure. And if you do fly, try to do it in a safe environment. Even though it's always better to skip a flight if it's extra windy out, there are moments when you don't have a choice. For example, when you're on a drone job. There are still things you can do to fly safely even in windy weather. Now, you know how most car accidents happen close to home? Well, most wind-related drone accidents happen during takeoff and landing. You can follow these easy steps to make your flight smooth and easy on the wallet. You don't have to gamble your drone worth hundreds of dollars just to get the shot that you want. Now, first, look for a spot that is protected from the wind. Cliffs, buildings, tall shrubbery, or lines of trees. Whatever it is that will keep your flight path a little more sheltered. Be aware of the obstacles in your flight path as well, because the best shelter might also be your worst enemy. The more you understand your own flight path and the risks at hand, the safer you will be in the air. In this clip, I was flying near the beach. Realistically, it would be best if I had a trash can or a car to block the path of the wind where I took off. If you're going to fly off the ground, place the drone down with the camera facing the same direction of the wind path. You want to make sure to stand five feet behind the drone in case something goes wrong in the takeoff. If you're hand launching your drone like I normally do, make sure you hold your drone out and have the camera facing the direction of the wind path. It's extremely important that you keep the drone leveled and not tilted because if it's tilted when you launch, it can tip over in the same direction of the wind and you know potentially crash. Once you're up in the air, fly your drone against the wind. Your drone's battery drains quicker in windy conditions. By first flying against the wind, you get a sense of how much battery is actually left. Then when it comes to returning your drone back for landing, the wind will push your drone back in your general direction. If you don't want to be like my friend, then always keep in mind the wind direction and your drone's battery and voltage. If you do fly it out in the same direction that the wind is moving, make sure to create buffer time to fly it back since you'll be fighting against the wind to get it back home. The drone will be working at full capacity to make it back. So, for example, it, let's say you normally fly a drone back at 30% on a particular flight path. Try to fly it back at 40% so that you don't have an accident due to you know low battery error. You have to pay closer attention to your drone's battery life and voltage in windy conditions. You can't rely on your typical battery drain to be accurate. I highly suggest switching your remote to S mode, also known as sport mode, so that you're using the full maximum speed of your drone. This isn't a necessity, but you can also switch your remote to attitude mode or ATTI mode while you're flying if you have a drone that allows it. Now, many newer drone models like this one don't let you manually switch to attitude mode anymore. And it only happens when you actually lose signal. But it's great for smooth, seamless shots because GPS information is not collected. And the drone will continue moving in whatever direction you are going in before you let go of the sticks. The drone will glide in the wind, creating a seamless and uninterrupted shot. The winds will naturally speed up the movement of your drone. So try to keep your speed down to avoid unexpected turbulence and jarring movements caused by these gusts of wind. You have better control over your drone movement this way and you can always speed up the footage and post. Landing a drone in windy conditions can be very sketchy, even more so than when you're launching a drone. Now, I personally prefer to, you know, hand catch my drone in windy conditions since I know it would most likely not tip over if I have a hold of it. What you want to do is hover the drone at a high altitude directly above you. Slowly bring it down before snagging the belly of the drone. Keep the drone above you until the propellers are completely turned off. A lot of people have missed this step, so make sure you do that. Then bring the drone down to your level. If it's extra windy, then play it safe and have the wind at your back to avoid the drone flying at you. You want to keep that face looking pretty, don't you? Now this might be hard for you if you're not very experienced with hand launching and catching, and I totally understand that. If you're landing it on the ground, face the drone against the wind so that it doesn't tip over the front side when it lands. You can use the same cover as before to make things just a little easier. Just be careful that you aren't flying too close to the cover. And that's it. If you follow all the tips in this video, you will be a pro at flying your drone in the wind. So long as you aren't flying in a tornado, ah! 
you should be able to keep your little DJI buddy safe and sound. Now, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, the biggest compliment to me is if you could share it with someone else. I would also enjoy it, of course, if you subscribe to stay up to date on new videos. And feel free to comment below if you have any drone-related questions or stories. If you're interested, I also do online educational coaching, and I have a comprehensive e-course on being a drone pilot, where I teach you how to start up your professional droning career from scratch. The information is in the links below. See you in the next video.